Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment as the Tennessee Titans lose to the Arizona Cardinals 7 to 12. Now, it's about time, honestly, that this Tennessee Titans team lost another game right before this game. They had won six of their last seven games, but as we know, they had been winning a lot of ugly games. They had been sneaking away with victories, and it was about time that their luck caught up with them. Now, yet again, because this has been a consistent thing throughout this season, I have to apologize because I know a lot of you are coming on to this video, and you're wanting me to yell, and you're wanting me to scream, and you want me to be just as upset as you are, Tennessee Titans fans, and I'm sorry, you're just not going to get that here. People, cooler heads prevail, okay? I understand this loss sucks, but this is not the time to panic. Now, it is the time for urgency, okay? We have to clean up a bit now before we fall out of the playoffs, but realistically, I just don't see that happening right now. I am calm, and I suggest you will, or you should be as well. Now, we're going to talk about this game. This was not a very good game for this Tennessee Titans football team. Let's start by talking about, as we often do, as we weekly do, Marcus Mariota at the quarterback position. Now, the fact of the matter is this. I mean, it's week 14, people. We know stuff at this point. Like, uh, this season, it's almost over. We get it. This year is just not a very good year for him. This was, to me, um, either his worst or his second worst game this season. I think it was worse than the Pittsburgh Steelers game. I don't care that he threw four interceptions in that game. In this game, he only threw two. I thought this game was worse. Um, he had worse throws to me. He was less confident to me in the pocket. He was really shaky, early, late, middle. The game didn't really matter. Didn't have a great pocket presence throughout this football game. This was his worst football game to me. Um, not only this year, but maybe in his entire career. I mean, this was not a very good game for him. Beyond that, the running game wasn't good. We couldn't get anything going in terms of the running game. And that made sense to me. Like the Cardinals team that we're looking at that we face today, they're not very good. But their defense still has talent on it. We see Chandler Jones, 14 sacks this season. Tyron Matthew, he comes down, he causes hell. Patrick Peterson, shut down quarterback in the NFL. This is a pretty damn good defense still, but their offense is, so, is total trash. That's their problem right now uh, because of the injuries that they have sustained this season. So... Our offense couldn't get anything done today. And look, I have defended Mike Malarkey, and I will continue to do so. Today, the coaching staff was not great, um, especially Terry Robisky, who I believe we should fire. Okay, I'm the calm one. I'm the cool, calm, collected guy. But yeah, Terry Robisky's got to go. Okay, I don't want to fire Mike Malarkey, who has come into this franchise and resurrected it from the mediocrity, not even mediocrity, from the hell, the depths of hell that we were in, going 2-14, and etc., to now bring us to the point where we're going to make the playoffs most likely. 90% chance we're going to make the playoffs at this point. I'm not going to fire that guy. I will, however, fire Terry Robisky, uh, who has turned this offense, uh, initially turned it into a pretty damn good offense last year, but has turned it back to total garbage. It's garbage. Uh, and there's no offensive a scheme that I can see out there on the football field that is conducive to anything successful ever. Okay, in other words, I, I don't see what he's actually scheming. Like, you know, think about the word scheme. Think about the word scheme, not only in a football context, but outside of a football context. For you to scheme something, that means putting together a plan, you know, putting something together, you know, a, a sort of plan, a systematic procedure of which you will implement on the football field. And I just don't see that. Because he just calls whatever the hell he wants to. He calls things where they don't make any sense. For example, he'll call wide receiver screens when the quarterbacks are pressed five yards or less. Makes absolutely no sense. He calls, you know, these crazy bootleg runs, which we didn't have many of today, but so he calls them whenever the hell he wants to. Uh, he calls Derrick Henry running out halfback toss on a third and one. He calls whatever the hell, whenever the hell he wants to. Okay, there's no scheme here. It's not systematic. It doesn't make sense. It's not procedural. It's not good. And, and at this point, this offense, it's not living up to this 
offense potential at all is one of the bottom, should be after this game, one of the bottom 10 offenses in the NFL. And it just shouldn't be. The offensive personnel, wide receivers, they're not great. The running backs are good. The offensive line is good. The quarterback is good. We should not be one of the bottom 10 units in the NFL in terms of our offense. Robisky, okay, he should go. And I've never really defended Robisky. I defended Mark Malarkey again. Look, if you're coming into a team and you resurrect them from the, from the depths of hell, you're going to get some defense from me. That's what you're going to get. Terry Robisky, not much from me. This game kind of solidified it to me. He should be pretty much done after this year. Now, we could still have four or five games left. Okay, we could still have four or five games left. So perhaps maybe we could go on some offensive spree and that would be fantastic. It'd be great, but I doubt it, dog. It's week 14. If that was going to happen, it probably would have happened already. Okay, so I'm, uh, yeah. Okay, he's done. Uh, offense today wasn't great. Mariota wasn't great. My offensive line was engaged. The great Taylor Lewan, uh, he got injured. So in came Dennis Kelly, who we know is not very good. Jack Conklin has regressed for reasons that are unbeknownst to me. I don't know what happened to Jack Conklin in the offseason. Maybe he was going down to Honky Talk Central in Nashville, Tennessee. You're going down to Mumbian Street drinking too much. Or so I don't know. He, he is not the same player he was last year. This much I know to be true. The all-pro right tackle, Jack Conklin. He is not this year. Uh, so that sucks. In terms of a wide receiver core, uh, again, look, Corey Davis had a nice catch today. It was a 22-yard catch. Um, but, man, this guy has work to do. He's just not making that much of a damn impact. Like, we're looking at Josh Gordon, right? And I don't want to compare him to Josh Gordon because Josh Gordon's very good. But, for example, right, Josh Gordon hadn't played for two years. But when he comes back on the field, what does he do immediately? He makes freaking plays. Why? Because in the day, he's freaking good. Okay, he can go out there and he can run stupid routes for the stupid Cleveland Browns with a horrible quarterback, horrible offensive coach, and he'll still get stuff done because he's good. You know, ultimately, Corey Davis is going to have to do a little more than what he's doing. He's not horrible. You can see the potential there. But he doesn't do nearly enough, and he doesn't do nearly enough for number five overall pick in which he was drafted. I mean, this man was drafted higher. And almost all the wide receivers in the NFL, the only ones that have been drafted higher than this guy, Amari Cooper, A.J. Green, Julio Jones. That's it. Yeah, everyone else has been drafted at a position lower than Corey Davis. Mike Evans, lower than Corey Davis. Oda Beckham, lower than Corey Davis. Antonio Brown, way lower, right? Only A.J. Green, Julio Jones, and maybe I'm forgetting someone else, but uh, those are the only ones I can think of at the top of my head. Jones, Cooper, and Green that have been drafted at a higher position or equal to Corey Davis, right? So those are the expectations that are being thrusted upon you. Okay, so we need to see more than this, and we're just not seeing that. Uh, this year, at least. Uh, Eric Decker actually caught something and ran afterwards, so that was good. Wow, for Eric Decker today. Uh, Delaney Walker, uh, he played well throughout most of the game, but what happened late? As he dropped two passes, Mariota had one of his few good passes today over the top left side to Lenny Walker. Walker should have came down with that. I know it was a difficult catch, but it wasn't that difficult. It ended up being right in your bread basket. Um, and then he just dropped it off of his helmet. And then the next play, third and 10, could have moved the chains and kept that follow drive going and dropped that as well. And he was hit hard. I understand that. But Delaney Walker, you're better than that. And you know you're better than that. I expect more from you than that. You're still good. I'm not saying that you're not, but we need you to be better great there. Uh, that's what we need you to be there. Richard Matthews is back, but he's not making much of an impact. You know, whatever. We tried to find him over the top. It just didn't work. Um, oh, nothing works. You know, I, I like that. I like that we're looking for deep shots, right? People used to complain about this last year, that we didn't have a great deep ball game. And I always said it was BS because look, if we're moving the chains, I'm happy. Now we're not moving the chains. Because we're looking for these deep passes, and when they're not there, we can't do anything. Like, if we're either going to, like, whenever we go for these deep shot plays, right, we're going to have Corey Davis running a streak, maybe Rashard Matthews, Delaney Walker probably running a, a, a pretty shallow, uh, uh, no, pretty deep crossing route, maybe 15, 20 yards crossing over the middle, and then that's it. Maybe a check down available. Only three options available there. The defense is able to cover these three options almost all the time. At which point, Mario either has to throw the ball away or run, 
and maybe try to force it to Lenny Walker and he gets intercepted. Like this is what I keep seeing, these plays being called, only three options. Barrio looks deep, nothing there, is gonna try to force it to Lenny Walker over the middle because that's literally the only other option. Occasionally, you'll have Taewon Taylor who's going to run over the middle and not know what he's doing. Because right now it looks like Taewon Taylor has no idea what he's doing. Every time he is targeted, every time I see him, he does something I cannot believe. A couple weeks ago, did not even, he slipped inexplicably, did not go for the ball, Mario to intercept it. This week, <laughs> again, doesn't see the ball, uh, and then, he, I, 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 what, what was he doing there in the first quarter? Remember that play, he's running over the middle, doesn't see the ball until it's too late, doesn't adjust to the ball. Some would say Mario was inaccurate there, but as the commentators explained, and in which I agree, Taewon Taylor has to adjust and get the ball there. Ridiculousness there. So, Taewon Taylor, look, I, I, I thought we should have played him earlier in the season. Now I'm saying, okay, now nah, I know we don't. Now I know why we don't play him. Because now I'm saying, okay, whenever we target him, doesn't really know what he's doing. I get it. Um, okay, so I get it. So, other than that, let's move on to the special teams, which I have to talk about very briefly. First of all, I don't understand this. And Mike Moore, okay, I will defend you, but I cannot defend you here, in which he went for it on a fourth and one in the third quarter, I believe, when we were up seven to three at our own 30 yard line. Made absolutely no sense. The Cardinals couldn't do anything offensively. Why would you even entertain the possibility of giving them a short field and you hand the ball off to Eric Weems, who has never been anything close to being formidable in this league, at least since 2010, okay? So that made no sense to me why we handed off to Eric Weems for a special teams rushing attempt. It, it, it was stupid, it was a fake punt, it was bad, and I, I don't understand why we did that. That allowed three points for the Cardinals right there, but it wouldn't matter. You know, I, I could tell when we got the ball late in this game, we weren't gonna go down and score anything because in the other games, although our offense had been disappointing, we would have 13 points, we would have 20 points, with seven, we had no offensive chemistry, we had no flow, we had nothing going for us. We just, there was no way. We had no momentum offensively, no comfort offensively. You could tell there was no way we were going to go down and score at the end of the game. And this was one of the reasons why. Uh, anyway, we move on to the defense, okay? The defense is playing really well, okay? Ever since the Pittsburgh Steelers matchup, this defense is playing really well. Now, there is a question. Are they playing really well because they're actually really good? Or are we facing absolute trash? And the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Because we are facing absolute trash. We're going up against Blaine Gabbert and Kerwin Williams today. Okay, so that's not a very formidable matchup. Last week, it was Tom Savage and DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, Hopkins, one of the top five wide receivers in the NFL right now. Okay, week before that, I don't know, I don't care. My point is this. You know, we haven't been going up against great talent lately. Okay, maybe it was the Bengals, actually. I don't know. I can't really remember. Point is this. We haven't been going up against great offensive teams lately. The defense has been looking good. Is it because we're going up against bad teams? Or is it because they're actually playing better? I think it's a combination of both. I think they are certainly playing better than they were in the beginning of the season. Obviously, they're getting more sacks. We're seeing that come to, uh, to fruition right now. And by the way, it was the Colts that we beat the other week. Um... We're seeing that, but other than that, still, we're not going against great teams, so when we face the Rams in a couple of weeks, I think we'll limit them somewhat. Like, maybe they won't score 40, but they could still easily score 30, and my bet will probably be like 28 in Nashville. Okay, so I'm still not very confident about the defense. Uh, no, man, uh, not many conclusions I could take away from the defense today other than that, though. I mean, I, they, I, I thought they played well. They got a bunch of sacks, eight sacks today. Drell Casey's earning him, uh, earning his money now after getting off to what was, to me, a slow start to start this season. Eric Walden is getting involved now. David King. Look, I've not been following uh, intricately our signings and whatnot during the season. I just haven't been doing it. I haven't been following much of the NFL, honestly, this year. I saw this guy. I'm like, who the hell is number 95 for this football team? I saw 95 on the defensive line. There has not been a time in a while where I literally looked at a Tennessee Times player and I'm like, who the hell is that guy? He had a 95 David King. Um, and I think he was better than at least Sylvester Williams. I'll tell you, he was better than Sylvester Williams. Now, David King, I believe, because I have no idea who this is. I followed the draft. 
I have not heard of this guy, so I'm assuming he's been undrafted for a number of years now, or maybe undrafted this year. I don't know. I have no idea. This guy uh, made some plays, and I believe he's a 3-4 defensive end. That's where he was lined up most of the time, although at times he was matched up against the center as well. So, I'm intrigued. Uh, I don't think he's great, but I'm intrigued. Austin Johnson is playing better on the defensive line, so I like seeing that. Uh, maybe he won't be a complete and total bust. Which would be nice, because right now we're looking back at that 2016 NFL draft, and of our three second rounders, only one of them is good. That is not good. Um, but maybe Austin Johnson does have a chance, we'll see. Um, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it for our team today. It was a disappointing game. It was an L. It was a loss for the Tennessee Titans. Now, here's a conversation that we now need to have. Now, everyone is convinced on my timeline, my Twitter timeline, at the MJ Take, by the way. Everyone is convinced that we are now going to fall out of the playoffs. This is one loss. The second loss of our last eight games has people saying we're now going to fall out of the playoffs. And I understand why you believe that, because you're seeing the Los Angeles Chargers creeping up. You're seeing the Ravens playing well. But I'm saying I highly, highly, highly doubt it. First of all, we have the tiebreaker over the Baltimore Ravens, who, to me, will lose tonight against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. Okay? They may even lose to the Cleveland Browns in a couple weeks, too. We'll see about that. Moreover, okay, you have the Chargers and the Chiefs, who, yes, they're creeping up a bit, but they face each other next week. One of them has to lose that football game. Good. Beyond that, I don't trust the Chiefs to win their last two games. I don't trust the Chargers to win their last two games, although I think that they will. And we'll see what will happen, but I still think at worst case scenario, we're the sixth seed. In terms of the division, I don't love our chances. Uh, we're facing the 49ers next week, and the 49ers look better with Jimmy Garoppolo at the helm. However, uh, I think this is going to be a nice wake-up call for this football team, at least to the point to where they will win next week. The last two games, I ain't confident about even Jacksonville. Right now, Jacksonville is playing better than us, and we had the advantage of getting games done when we needed to. Now it looks like we're losing that advantage, okay? We're gonna see what's gonna happen this week. If we lose to the 49ers, then it is panic time. Then we have to hit that damn panic button because our last two games is against the Rams and the Jaguars, and we gotta win one. I, we only have to win one to be. I think nine and seven, we're in the playoffs. So I can, I, if we win next week, I think we're good. If we lose next week, it's panic time. We gotta beat the Rams or the Jags. Good luck, it won't be easy, but you can still do it. But this season, I, I think we get it at this point. I think we've gotten it for the past number of weeks, people. All right, that's why I'm not freaking out about this game, because I've gotten it. Maybe you haven't, I've gotten it. Look, we're going to make the playoffs, most likely. We're going to lose in the playoffs, most likely. Almost 100%. If we make it, we're going to lose in the playoffs. I would say, currently, the first round, it just depends who we're facing. If we win the AFC South somehow, like we... If we actually win the AFC South, it's probably because we beat the Jaguars Week 17, right? So if we win the AFC South and we beat the Jags Week 17, then I would say that we probably win our first playoff game because at that point we have momentum. Uh, we'll be facing, like, the Ravens or something. We already beat the Ravens in Nashville. I think we can do it again. Sure. Um, if we lose the AFC South, we come in as a wild card for the succeed. I won't love our chances, but we could be facing Jacksonville, who is not great. The Chargers, I think we lose to the Chargers in L.A. because they're playing too well right now. So that's it. And we've said this, and this is my thing. This is why I'm really not upset. This is why I'm not nearly as upset as many of you are and are going to continue to be. At the end of the day, if I would have told you before the year, if I would have spoiled this Titan season, only saying this and this alone, after week 14, the Tennessee Titans will be 8-5 and five and it will be very likely that they will make the playoffs. Are you happy with that? I would have told you yes. Now, when you see it, it may not happen the way you envisioned. It may not happen the way you would have liked. The stats may not be the way you would have liked. Mariota may, be, may not be playing as well. You may not be in love with this happening here, or this game, or this result, getting our ass kicked by the Texans here, getting your ass kicked by the Steelers there. But if I would have just told you that and that alone, you would have said, yep, that's about my expectations. And if I told you by the end of the year, they'd be in the playoffs, they get in a close uh, wild card game and they would lose, you'd be like, yeah, you know what, that kind of sucks, but that's about what I expected. Because at best, if you were an educated Titans fan, you would have said, you know what, at best, maybe we'll make the divisional round. 
And that's where we are, people. There's no time to panic now. Now, I'm gonna continue to stress this. The minute this season is over, the minute we are kicked out of the playoffs, the minute we lose in the playoffs or even in the regular season because we don't make the playoffs, then we can start the discussion of what we need to do next because right now, the conversation is pointless. If you are starting the conversation of firing Mike Malarkey, again, I don't think that's even a conversation we should start, but let's just say you want to go down the road. What's the point? Because do you think that there's any chance in hell that Amy Adams Strunk, envision that woman for a sec, just, just think of that woman in your mind right now, Mama Amy, okay, Mama Strunk, Mama Adams Strunk, look at her face, look at her smiling face. Do you think that there's any chance in hell that she is going to fire Mike Malarkey, people? Do you think that there's any chance in hell? There's literally no chance in hell. There's not a snowball's chance in hell. So what's the point of even having that conversation? The conversation we need to have and we will have is to be fired Terry Robinski. And I think that's something Mike Malarkey and staff will consider. And then what improvements do we need to make to this coaching staff, to this roster, to ensure that next year goes a lot better than this year. And that next year we can truly become the Super Bowl contender that we've been waiting to be for the past 10 years. Until then, there's no point in having conversations about, oh, Mike Malarkey stinks because he ain't going anywhere. Marcus Mariota stinks because he ain't going anywhere. And there's nothing we can do to fix any of that this season. That is a off-season, post-season thing. Okay, that's it, people. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Titans versus the Arizona Cardinals. This disappointing Titans loss. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I want to know if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later.